Pre-Calc chapter 8, section 2. We're only going to look at section 2 here. Now it says 2 and 3. Uh, and so 8 to our goals is basically looking, looking at arithmetic sequence and then the summation of those as well. And so arithmetic is just the difference between consecutive terms is constant or the common difference uh, is kind of like the rate of change, uh, all kind of terminology describing the same value. Here we call it D when we're looking at arithmetic sequences. When we're looking at sequences, they use the, the variable D. Think of it as M, the slope as well, because it's a constant rate of change. So in this pattern here, 5 to 8 is 3, and you can see how it's a constant difference. We're adding 3 between these uh, numbers every time. And so the constant rate of change is 3. And so if you apply your knowledge of y equals mx plus b, it still works for this pattern because it's a constant rate of change. So the formula we're going to use here is the same setup, but instead of using m, we use d. Instead of using x, we use n. And then we have plus our c value, which is uh, could be at term 0. And so there's a few other ways to write that. Um, and so in this pattern here, I know our D is 3. And then our C value is term 0. So if this is term 1, term 2, we need to go backwards 1 to get to term 0. So subtract 3 and we get to 2. So it would be plus 2. So this would be the general rule for that pattern. And so you can see down here, there's the same kind of rules down here um, that we just wrote a, a, a previous. Um, where C is always the first term minus the difference. So it's kind of like to find the zero terms. Another way of saying that, to find the zero term. Another way you can write that pattern is starting with the first term, but then you have to multiply D by uh, N minus 1, uh, a previous value. So either one would work, whatever you're comfortable with. So another example, the fourth term of arithmetic sequence is given. They tell us it is 16. And the tenth term is 46. So they write the first five terms. So we can find the first five terms, or we can write the formula for it as well. So these are really two terms. The fourth term, the fourth term is 16. So I'm thinking as a point, and the tenth term is 46. So if you recall your linear equation knowledge, I could find the equation between these two points as one way of actually finding this. Uh, and so if I do that, really right here, I'm finding the common difference. So I'm adding 5. Our, our m or our d value here is 5. So we're adding 5 to each of the term previous terms to find the next term. And so they want to find the first five terms. Um, now, I could finish finding the formula. So I can plug in our 5 for d, and then I can plug in a point so if I choose the point here, 4, 16, 16, and then 4 for n, I can then solve for c. So this is 20, so I have to subtract 20 to both sides. So negative 4 is c. And so our formula for the nth term could be this. And so now it's the first five terms in this pattern. So term number 1, just plug 1 in for n, and you have 5 minus 4 is 1. And I'm just going to add 5. So 6 plus 5, 11 plus 5, 16 plus 5, 21. Those would be the first five terms in this pattern. So the sum, we can find the sum of a finite arithmetic sequence of n terms. And so the formula where n is the term number we're looking at, divided by 2. And so this is really dividing the amount of terms we have in our sequence. And then uh, a1 plus an, so the first term plus the last term. Another way you can look at it, uh, when I write it, I typically would write that same rule as a1 plus an all over 2 times n. That also works. And so what you see here, how you're averaging the sum of the first and the last times by how many terms you have. So it's another way to think about it. So the sum of the integers 1 to 57. This is an arithmetic sequence because you're just adding 1 every time. So we can find the finite uh, arithmetic summation. And so to plug that in, it's going to be s of 57, because 57 terms. So then the first term in that is 1, the last term is 57. I divide that by 2 and then multiply by how many terms? 57. 
So that's all you're doing there. So that's going to be 58 divided by 2, or 29 times 57. And you get 1,653. That'd be the sum of all those terms. Much easier to use a formula than actually plunge, uh, punch in all those numbers in a calculator. Partial sum of an infinite series. Uh, and so we can just use the sum uh, of the finite formula from above. It's the same thing. So find the 50th partial sum. So the 50th partial sum is means the sum of 50 terms. Now it doesn't have to start from the first term. Typically it will, but it doesn't have to. So <clears throat> the sum of 50 terms here is still going to be the first term, negative 6, plus the last term. Uh-oh. Don't know this last term right here. Divided by 2 times the amount of numbers, 50. So my issue here is finding this right here, which is the first or the last term. So to find that, I need to find a n. That's what i got to find to plug in here. So then I need to find this formula. So the formula here, we are actually adding 4 every time. So negative 6 plus 4, negative 2 plus 4, and it keeps going. So that's our d, so 4n plus, and if I go back one, I'm at negative 10. So negative 10. We want to find the 50th term in this pattern. So 4 times 50 minus 10. So this is 200 minus 10, or 190. And that's the value we got to plug in here. So then if we actually evaluate that, so we have negative 6 plus 190, so we're at 184 over 2 times 50, which is equal to 92 times 50, or just 4,600. So that would be the sum of those 50 terms. So again, just using this is the formula we're going to use, and those are on your formula sheet. So a few more here, find the sum of this. Now, now this is your, using our summation notation. So this is from 51 to 100. This is a little different of this is the rule. So it's still going to be the same formula. The first term plus the last term over 2 times the amount of terms we have. The first thing you have to realize is how many terms are we dealing with here. So what is in this problem? So we're going from 51 to 100, how many numbers is that? That is 50 numbers. So n is still 50 in this. What is the first term in this? Well, that's plugging 51 in for n. So 7 times 51, and you get 357. And then finding the nth term is plugging in the n value, the upper bound, 100 n, so 7 times 100, and you get 700. So plug those in this for formula. So 357 plus 700 all over 2 times 50. So you punch this in, you get 26,425. Hope you, see how this formula, hope you see how this formula helps us add a bunch of values in a given pattern together. Let's do, let's do one more. A partial sum, given this rule. So this is from 1 to 20. So that would be 20 numbers. And so we're doing a sum of 20 numbers. The first numbers, we plug 1 in for n. So we're getting 3 plus. Now we plug 20 in. That's going to be 41 all over 2 times 20. So that's going to be 44 over 2, or 22 times 20, which is going to be 440. So pretty quick once you understand the formula, and you get those on your quizzes and tests, so it should not be an issue. So make sure you practice that tonight on A2. We'll see